Today, I want to talk about how I turned this into this. Because you see, I'm making a game about creating your own unique and interesting little island environments. You can shape the land, add plants, rocks, grass, buildings, bridges, boats, animals, change the color, a lot of cool stuff. But right now, when you leave, it's gone forever. So I did what any good game developer would do. I took the hit, doing the hard thing, to figure out how I can persist all of this information into a data format that allows players to save and load their creations. Because here's the thing, I love the people who play my games. They're the reason that I get to buy groceries. So I gotta make sure that they can save their progress, you know? So let me introduce you to the problem of turning any level into a text file that can be used to recreate any scene. So let me explain what I need to do at a high level. There should be a way for the player to save the exact current state of their game. And there should be a way to view and select previously saved files and then load that data into the current scene. So to break it down, there are four major things in the game that I need to save. And these are land tiles, structures, animals, and bridges. And there's some other stuff too, but we'll get to that. So starting with land tiles, we need to record only two things. One is the coordinate position that it occupies. And then the second thing is what type of tile it is. And that's easy enough. So let's make a data structure that can hold that. And a structure is basically any simple thing that can be placed. A building, a rock, a plant, a boat, all of these are structures in the game. And so for structures, we need the type as well as the spatial data. And the spatial data consists of the world position, the scale, and the rotation. And actually it's the exact same for animals as well. We just need the animal type and then the spatial data for that. But bridges are a bit different. But to make it easy, I made it so that all we need are two coordinates the start location and the end location. And then based off of those two points, we'll be able to generate a bridge between those two spots. And then we get to some of the miscellaneous stuff. Like we want to save the name of our current color palette that the player is using. And we also want to save each individual value in the procedural generation settings so that we can keep track of all the values on these sliders. And that's basically it. But there's one more thing we need to do to make it super neat. We need to save some metadata about the save file. And this is so that when we display the save files, we have some stuff to show. So first for the metadata, we just save the time that we saved it, which is pretty easy. But I also wanna take a screenshot of the level while we save it and use that as an icon for the save file. So I just set up a separate camera in the scene to capture the image and then encode that image into an array of bytes. And voila! So now if I generate a new island, then navigate over to this new save pop-up, I hit new, and we can go check out that file. And this is what it looks like. Uh, this is kind of nasty here. Let me throw it into a beautifier so it looks a little better. But yeah, here's all the levels information in JSON format. You can see this is all of the byte data for the icons, and then you can see all of the other data for the tiles and the structures and everything else is here. And if we try to load in that file, we can see our little icon displayed here. And then when we select that file, it runs the data through all of our different managers and the code and boom, there we go. So now that this was in, I have to say that I was a little worried that it would be a complicated feature, but it ended up being pretty easy to implement. I guess that just goes to show that you should never judge a feature by its uh, cover. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm actually really, really happy with this. Now when I'm testing things out, I have a whole variety of pre-built scripts that I can jump into at any time and test or build additions onto it. Right now I'm limiting the amount of save slots a player can have to just 10, just for UI constraints. But yeah, the hardest part about implementing the save feature was just sitting down and figuring out what the data should look like, and then making sure that I can create new instances of these objects with that same data. I'm really excited to see what all of you will build in this game, and if you haven't already, it would mean a lot to me if you'd go to Steam and wishlist bridges and docks because it's coming out really, really soon. And actually it might be out by the time this video is posted. I don't know, you should check Steam. But that's it for me today. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you all in the next one.